The pain arc is the most liked arc in the Naruto series by a long shot. Whenever I make polls asking people, what's your favorite arc in Naruto? The majority of answers say the pain arc and the tuning exams is second, but actually the pain arc has a big lead on it. Now, the pain arc is not my favorite arc in Naruto, but I do enjoy it very much. It's a fabulous piece of the story, and it ends with one of the most climactic fights in the series, Naruto vs. Pain. Now, if there's one point of contention with the pain arc itself, it's gonna be how it actually ends with Nagata reviving everybody in the Leaf Village with his Rina Tensei. Obviously, this aspect of the story is not enough to make Make most people dislike the arc after all as I said before this is the most popular arc in the entire story but there is a significant minority of the fandom that really detests how the arc ends with everybody being revived seemingly out of nowhere and I do understand that feeling because yes it does feel a little bit out of nowhere as I said Nagato says yes I have the seventh path on me the outer path I can actually revive the souls of everybody I killed in the village by pulling their souls back from the pure lands into our world and they're gonna be alive again isn't it cool everybody that I kill here is gonna be alive so the emotional investment that you had on the death of several characters is diminished because oh so like I mean their deaths weren't really impactful because they're not gonna stay dead it is a cheap storytelling trick to say oh this character died you build all that tension the sadness the emotional investment oh no these people are dead but then well when you realize they're back here, it's just like, oh, okay, I suppose didn't have to worry about them. This is the quintessential writing example of wanting to have your cake and eat it too. So, you want the audience to feel invested on the character deaths so that there's gonna be more emotional payoff in the arc itself, but you don't wanna deal with the problems of killing said characters, so you just bring them back to life in the end of the arc. Death fakeouts can be done well here and there, but if they're overused, they become a terrible, terrible trope in any story. And this is the reason why many people don't like this part of the pain arc, because people were just being resurrected, so all of a sudden, all this weight and impact of pain invading the leaf village and destroying everybody is reduced to not much I mean the village is still completely destroyed there's a massive crater in it but the people are alive and this is probably much more important isn't it now many people who like the pain arc are simply gonna say well I'm fine with the renitense I don't even care about its storytelling implications because I just didn't want Kakashi to die for example and this is pretty much the same sentiment I get when I tell people that guys should have died in the fight against Madara because it would have been much more impactful, but then people say, oh, I didn't want Guy to die, I mean, he's such a cool character, and yes, he's a cool character, but character death is very interesting in certain scenarios and stories. So yes, you may be sad because a character died, but character deaths are part of the process. This is not the problem in of itself. And yes, I do understand that people get attached to those characters, but saying I just didn't want the character to die feels a little, you know, immature to say the least. I am actually fine with the Renitensei being used in the end of the pain arc, but it's not because of this particular reason. It's not because, oh, I just didn't want Kakashi to die. And allow me to explain why I actually like the usage of the Renitensei here. First of all, we have to take into account the characters that died and were brought back with Rina Tensei. I mean, obviously, when we see the souls coming back to the Leaf Village, there were thousands of people who died. After all, the village was exploded with paying Shinra Tensei there. But I'm talking about named characters, important characters that were revived. We have Kakashi, the first and most obvious one. It's definitely the character who's most important that quote-unquote died in the pain arc. We have Shizune, who was killed by the human path and, you know, soul extracting thing and all that. We have Fukasaku, who was killed by Tendo, and that's actually it for named characters. Choza actually survived the fight against Tendo. Hinata survived being stabbed by Tendo in front of Naruto. Sakura went there and healed her. And Tsunade also survived. I mean, she was in a coma after the pain arc, but it's because she used too much chakra, but she was alive. And let's be real here, Shizune and Fukasaku are not that big of a deal in terms of character. If they died, people wouldn't really miss 
miss them very much, and their deaths, sure, they feel impactful, but they're not major things that would have happened in the series, something like Jiraiya dying, for example. The outlier here is obviously Kakashi dying, because this is an extremely big deal. A lot of people flipped out back in the day when the manga was coming out, because, what? Kakashi died? That's insane! The rest of the people who died are nameless characters, and yes, you feel the impact of the pain invasion when you see so many people dead, but, I mean, sure, it's impactful, but it's not as though a lot of people that we cared about died. If Kishimoto wanted to keep everybody dead, and not kill Kakashi, he could have just done something kind of like what he did to Hinata. Oh, he's actually barely alive, somebody goes there and heal him. Writing-wise, you could have easily kept those characters alive and still have a lot of people dying if Kishimoto didn't want to use the Rina Tensei. But the character deaths, especially Kakashi's death, were important to make the revival of the characters much more climactic and epic to watch. After all, oh, the characters are coming back! This is insane! It's great! It feels much more like a victory because important characters had died and now they're brought back with the Renatensei after Naruto talking to Jutsu's Nagato. If no important characters died in the pain invasion, then we wouldn't care whatsoever about Nagato using the Renatensei, would we? Because it's just a bunch of extra characters. I mean, Madara killed 20,000 people with his meteors when he showed up, and nobody really cared about anybody who died there because they were all extras. The important characters survived the attack. It was an awesome scene, but it doesn't really have the same impact because nobody that we knew the name of died. And the same thing would apply to the Pain Invasion and Rina Tensei itself. So yeah, if Kishimoto didn't want to kill those characters and still have a lot of people in the village die, he could have certainly done that. But he chose to have Pain revive everybody that he killed. And obviously there has to be a reason for it, because everything in storytelling has a reason, especially somebody like Kishimoto who writes things very clearly and he always trims the fat in the story. The Naruto manga is extremely fast-paced and they don't waste time with anything, so everything has a purpose and a meaning in the story. Naruto's talk no jutsu on Nagato is the most important talk no jutsu in the entire series, except for Sasuke's talk no jutsu in the very end. When you take a look at that talk no jutsu from a lore perspective, that was the moment where the scales would tip. Would Jiraiya's pupil destroy this world or save it? Who would come out on top? So Naruto being able to talk no jutsu Nagato means that, okay, so Jiraiya succeeded as a teacher in the end. He made one of his students to become the savior of the world in what is an extremely impactful moment in and out of universe. But the problem is, a character that gets talk no jutsu must do something to redeem himself or at least change his outlook on life. Imagine a world where everything else remains the same, but Rina Tensei doesn't exist in the Naruto story. Naruto arrives there, talks about everything that Jiraiya went through and why Nagato should not pursue his path of pain. See what I did there? Nagato gets convinced by Naruto, he flips sides, he's no longer loyal to the Akatsuki and quote-unquote Madara Uchiha, but then, I mean, what is he going to do, really? Because this character has done terrible, terrible things, he's killed thousands of people in the Leaf Village invasion, and has been the guy controlling the Akatsuki so that they go after tail beasts and wreak havoc on the entire planet. Sure, you could actually use the character for a longer period of time and make him go through this path of redemption in the story. Maybe he joins the Leaf Village in the war and fights for their side, but that was not the story Kishimoto wanted to tell. He clearly had other plans for the war, for Nagato's own Renegon. And even if that's the case, even if Nagato joins the Leaf Village, because I'm pretty sure first they would incarcerate him and interrogate him a lot so that they make sure, okay, this guy is actually on our side now. But even still, the damage done by the pain attack would still remain and Naruto wouldn't be seen as the hero of the Leaf Village. And that was the purpose of the pain arc. Everybody in the village was supposed to see Naruto as the hero now. It's the character arc that the main character was going through in the pain arc. Naruto becomes the hero of the village in the pain arc and he becomes the hero of the world in the end of the war arc. If everybody remained dead, and they were killed because they were 
protecting Naruto because the guy that destroyed their entire village was after the Nine Tails, which is inside of Naruto, and people already have prejudice because of that, then obviously people would detest Naruto for it, even more than they did beforehand. And this certainly wasn't what Kishimoto wanted for the story. He wanted this very climactic and satisfying conclusion for the pain arc where Naruto becomes the hero, where everybody thinks he's a great shinobi that saved them. And yeah, they protected Naruto, the Leaf Village ninjas. They never gave Naruto's location, only when, you know, Pain read Shizune's mind is when he gets the information. And in exchange, Naruto saves everyone. So you see, this is both character development for Naruto and for the Leaf Village itself, because they're no longer terrible people to Naruto. But this wouldn't really make sense if they remained all dead. Now yes, perhaps this what-if scenario in the story where Rina Tensei doesn't exist could be interesting in a darker tale that's probably not gonna be a shonen anime slash manga, and the village turns against Naruto even more, but this is clearly not Kishimoto's intention. And also, being able to revive everybody in the village because you just talk to the guy you fought against and the guy that was trying to kill you, a person who was a complete polar opposite in every single way, in his backstory, in his philosophy, in his worldview, and you managed to convince him because of the things you shared, and because of your sheer guts and determination, is something that feels epic and glorious. Naruto feels like the messiah in the end of the pain arc, when he returns to the leaf village and is hoisted up by everybody because he was able to revive people because of his words, essentially. And it's one of those things that's remarkable both in and out of universe, because people are gonna talk about this forever in the Naruto world, how Naruto saved the village and revived everybody by turning the guy he was fighting against in his favor. And it's very impactful for the audience when we see that, oh, okay, so Naruto's getting extremely powerful now, not only in terms of strength, but also in his character and his determination and what he believes in. Now, yes, as I said before, the fake how death trope, if overused, is terrible in any story, but it's certainly not overused in the Naruto series. Now, some people may disagree with me here, because people are gonna say, well, you think characters die all the time in the story, what are you talking about? But there's a difference between a fake out death and just cutting away from a particular scene to build up tension in the story. For example, when Data uses his C0 on Sasuke and everything explodes, you don't see Sasuke dying. Kishimoto just cuts away to build up some tension and then he reveals, oh, okay. Sasuke used the reverse summon to escape. And a lot of people are gonna say, there are a lot of times where characters are hit by jutsus and then they use the substitution jutsu or a genjutsu to escape from that particular situation and you think the character was dead for a second. I mean, I can even cite the exact same fight when Deidara uses C4 Karuro on Sasuke and he disintegrates twice because, well, Deidara used that jutsu two times and Sasuke used genjutsu two times to fool Deidara twice so that he would think Sasuke died but actually he didn't because Sasuke cast a genjutsu on him and fooled Deidara and all that. And Sure, this is a type of fake out death, but this is a completely different type of fake out because you don't think a character died for several, several episodes. It's for a couple of pages until the reveal comes, and this is pretty much the art of a shinobi. You have to fool your opponent, you have to think you're dead so that you can attack him from behind, so there's no issue with that. The fake out deaths we get in the pain arc are Kakashi, Fukasaku, and Shizune, who remained actually dead for several chapters, and for a second there people thought, okay, they're dead, it's over, they're not coming back, but they actually did. This is a much, much bigger problem, and yes, there are other cases in the story of characters faking their deaths, and you know, people actually think, okay, they died for real for several hundred chapters even, but no, actually they are not dead. However, these deaths are from antagonists, which is actually fine, because when you do that to the antagonists of your series, it's not gonna feel as though you're big, okay, main character, good, plot armor, he lives. I could give the examples of Obito being crushed by the rock and not actually dying, Madara being stabbed from behind by Hashirama in the Valley of the End and not actually dying, Orochimaru getting killed several times and not actually dying, even though the way he comes back in the war, it's not very good. But as I said, these are all antagonists. 
And because several of these fake out deaths were planned out and were actually very elaborate, they feel smart and difficult to defeat, which is good for a story because if you give your main characters, the good guys, these types of escape situations, then yeah, the story is not gonna feel satisfying because, oh, I mean, nothing really bad is gonna happen to the main character, right? I can only think about a few other times where good guy characters died and were quote-unquote revived. I mean, Garo, when he was captured by the Akatsuki and Chukaku got extracted, then yeah, Gara technically died for real, but he was resurrected by Chiyo, but she had to give her life in exchange, so I think that's pretty fair. And Chiyo's character arc there is phenomenal, so I'm fine with it. And then we have Naruto and Sasuke in the Wark, when Madara pretty much kills them both, but Naruto is saved by Minato and Obito when they put the Ninetales back inside of him, and Sasuke is saved by Kabuto after Madara stabs his heart. But they were not dead at any moment, they were saved, but I mean, saving people in a shonen anime slash manga is a very common thing. Gar is the only other good guy character that was literally brought back from the dead. And no, Edo Tensei don't count because they're literal zombies, they're no longer alive, and most of the time they're used against the good guy characters, so it's actually a very interesting tool to make good characters go through extremely tough situations and they have to make very difficult decisions because they're fighting against their loved ones. Now, I'll agree that the Rina Tensei Jutsu specifically should have had a little bit more foreshadowing to it before the pain arc and before it was actually used on the Leaf Village. Because when it's used, it does feel a little bit out of left field. Oh, okay, so you had that Jutsu the entire time. Now, Obito slash Madara slash Toby talks about the Rina Tensei Jutsu when he encounters Sasuke there and his surprise when he hears Nagato betrayed him and says, Oh, I actually intended on using that jutsu on me, saying that, okay, he wanted to revive Madara with the Rina Tensei because that was the actual plan, but that was done after the jutsu was used. Obito should have mentioned something about the Rina Tensei before the pain arc, like, he could have talked to Zetsu about, Yes, I think it's time for us to use the jutsu so that I can return at my full strength. I mean, he referred to himself as Madara, just like he did when he talked about the Rina Tensei with Zetsu and Sasuke there, but you just had to move that scene before the pain arc. And it doesn't have to be with Sasuke, it can't be with anyone really, it just has to be Obito or maybe Zetsu. You don't even have to mention the Rina Tensei name specifically, because this is kind of a spoiler, because the name of the Jutsu means pure reincarnation, so, oh, okay, so I guess you want to revive something? But if Obito just said that he wanted to get his full powers back by using a Jutsu and forcing Naga to, to do it or whatever, would have been enough to set up that beforehand, and then you get, oh, okay, so he was talking about this Jutsu when Nagato was using it to revive the entire village. But still, it's not the most egregious thing in the Naruto story by any means. And the moment where Naruto convinces Nagato to be on the line side of the force is actually a great moment in the series overall. So yeah, the Rina Tensei is good in the pain arc. Please subscribe to this channel because I know you're not subscribed and it takes two seconds. Also like the video if you enjoyed it and watch this other video right here because those things really help me with the YouTube algorithm. Thank you so much for watching guys.